Assalamu alaikum sisters, how are you all doing? I hope you all are well and good. I am Fatima G, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, you're so welcome. And for my returning subscribers, I am so happy you guys are here. Hope you all are doing well and good. So in today's video, I wanted to talk to one of my subscribers in particular. She has been asking me to do a video about salah for reverts for such a long time but because i'm not a revert myself so i didn't really know what to say or how to advise my um revert sister however with her just pushing me and pushing me i just thought to myself okay, you know what let me do it in a way as if i'm spending time with her chilling with her and we're just talking about salah and i'm basically just giving her advice i think that's a very good way to do it so initially the reason why i took so long to like, basically do this video for her was because i thought to myself i'm a lay woman i know a little bit about salah but i'm just not the right person to ask you. however i'm just going to do this video in a way as if i'm just talking to my revert sisters and just giving them advice and i know inshallah other revert sisters will benefit from it as well inshallah so without any further ado let's get into the video first of all i just want to say allahumma barik and mashallah tabarakallah to all the reverts out there what a blessing for you to have had the life that you once upon a time had and now you've embraced this new life of islam may allah bless you guys and look after you all and may allah keep you firm on this beautiful deen i know how difficult it might be from your lifestyle that you once upon a time had and now you have to embrace a total different way of life that that requires strength determination you have to be strong to embrace that so i ask allah to make it easier for you surely islam is such a blessing you know you guys are up on the right path alhamdulillah so keep strong keep fighting and just keep going even though i'm not a revert myself so i find it a bit difficult you know talking about salah because i haven't been through the process of not being a muslim and then you know getting into salah like I'm, I'm a born muslim yes but i did struggle with my salah before but i feel like it's different because for me salah has always been part of my life every even when i was younger so i had that journey with salah so i didn't just have to start if that makes any sense whatsoever so i don't know exactly what the how the sister wants me to take this video however i'm just going to talk about salah in general and maybe the importance of salah and some of the tips that i can give as a born muslim to my revert sisters who have just become muslim and those who you know they've become a muslim however their family don't know that they're muslim and then, and then also the group of sisters who they're muslims their family knows they're muslim and they're just struggling with salah in general first itself. of all there's no excuse for a muslim not to pray every single muslim have to pray unless the woman who is on her menstruation or a woman who has just given birth that bleeding during that period she does not have to pray or someone who is mentally disturbed those people are kind of exempt when it comes to prayer but everyone who is sane have to pray whether you're sick whether you're in a battlefield whether someone who is in prison and like now our brothers and sisters you know, in palestine that war and that oppression that's going on they still have to pray so there's no excuse for someone not to pray and this is because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to pray it's an obligation so no matter your circumstance except those people of course who are exempt you have no excuse not to pray so prayer is something that we all have to do so you can say for example subhanallah like revert just became a muslim and the next salah is asr they have to pray that salah they may not know what they're saying they may not even know how to really pray properly but they still have to stand there and perform that salah but first of all the first step is we know that you have to be purified you have to learn how to make wudu so if you didn't learn how to make wudu prior to taking your shahada the very same day you have to learn how to make wudu it's just simple steps you know there's lots of videos that you can watch on youtube on how to make wudu and you can just watch the videos a few times and then you get it inshallah and once you master the skills of making wudu is going to go with you forever it's something that you learn forever inshallah so you're purified and then you have to have a, a prayer garment that's loose that's free you have to you know cover your body make sure you have a prayer garment that covers you up to pray and most and most importantly have a clean space face the kibla etc this is for the brand new revert sisters you know slowly slowly you will get there inshallah and then one of the amazing things as well is that different massages they offer help for revert so make sure you find your local masjid and let them help you with the process of getting your salah salah on point inshallah and i guess the next stage is for the sisters who have just become muslim right and their family 
you know don't know about it and they don't want to just reveal it to their family yet and they live in the family home so it's quite difficult to have your prayer mats out or you know your prayer garment so that means you're literally hiding to pray i mean if you have a pra if you have a room where you know you're very private in that room and nobody really comes in and you can lock the door then it's easy you know you can just lock the door and then when it's a lot of time you just pray and then another thing is obviously for those sisters who don't have a lock in their room where their mom can just come into the room etc that's very difficult so i'll give you a backstory i know a sister personally who when she became a muslim it was very difficult for her she was not able to you know pray in front of her family or even in her room so what she used to do she used to have to pray in the bathroom subhanallah and that's the beautiful thing with our deen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have kind of excused some people when it comes to um salah when it comes to certain things because that was her situation at the time it is permissible to pray in the bathroom if that's all if that's your only option if you're trying to prevent from getting kicked out or from from getting you know verbally abused etc you can do that until you're comfortable to tell your family inshallah but you have to make sure that you pray because this is our this is one of the obligation of islam this is literally the second pillar after you know declaring your faith you know after saying the shahada which makes you a muslim so you say your shahada and now you're muslim and then you have to literally start praying so if praying in the bathroom is what you have to do for now that's basically what you have to do inshallah until you're comfortable to talk to your family about it and now i guess it's for the sisters who you know they're muslims and you know they're covering up but then they're still struggling with the salah that was me once upon a time even though i was born muslim right so i will give you tips on what i did for me um i started praying slowly slowly so i would pray this salah and then that salah and then the other salah was the other salah especially fajr was quite difficult for me to pray however i knew that that was my end goal i was trying to get my fajr on point and just praying my five daily salah so i just used to make lots and lots of dua and lots and lots of dua and eventually allah made it easier for me so just take it slowly and talk to people who are around you talk to local sheikh you know and just let him know that you're struggling talk to like sisters in the community and just let them know you're struggling and then they can come to your aid inshallah and what i would say personally is just understand that salah is the first thing that we're going to be asked about so knowing that should just motivate you to keep you going inshallah knowing that should want should make you want to pray your salah you know that subhanallah my lord is going to ask me about salah this is literally one of the first things i'm going to be asked about and my lord has ordered me to pray to remember him so let me do this you know like literally it takes five minutes like i know sometimes when your heart is heavy when your heart is not where it needs to be praying for five minutes can be very difficult you know so it takes time to basically release that sins that are, that's just making your heart heavy it takes time for that so what i would advise is do a lots and lots of istighfar do lots of istighfar and ask allah to forgive you and ask allah to make praying less burdensome to make it you know easy for you and for it to be a pleasure rather than a burden for you you know just ask Allah to make it easy and remove sins away from me because sins can make praying salah very difficult sins can make you know praying like you won't even have khushu you know which is basically just concentrating like just focus and just you know just being in the zone of salah and know? also another advice i would give is you should understand that you have to make sure you literally learn surah al-fatiha as quickly as you possibly can because that's one of the surahs that we have to read in every salah otherwise the salah is not valid you know so take your time to learn however don't take too long because some of these things are really really important now as we all struggle with salah we've all had our we've all had our stages and like i said this video is quite difficult for me to do because i'm not a revert so i've not had that process so it would be really great if a revert sister who i guess has a platform can do a video on how she on how her journey was on basically establishing salah or something like that that would be really great i think a lot of reverts will benefit from that but i say just take it slowly and just start praying slowly slowly and 
and understand why you reverted in the first place is to follow these rules and regulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in place for us. You, the reason why you reverted in the first place is to under, is because you understood that Allah is our Lord and he wants these things from us. And because he wants these things from us, we have to make sure that we, we establish them, especially salah. You no, know, it can be really, really daunting for those who have just become Muslim to start a steady routine with salah, but just take it slowly seriously just take it slowly and gradually so what i would say is obviously speak to an imam and speak to somebody of knowledge to give you better advice but i would say just start slowly i was a born muslim and i started slowly i started praying to salah and then three and then four and then when i got to four i'm like okay i'm really struggling with fajr at the moment you know i really need to get this five salah out of the way you know how can i possibly do this then that's when i started making lots and lots of da'a that's when i started going to the masjid a lot more and then i started being around sisters so you have to be around the community be around a lot of sisters be around you know student of knowledge you know learn and seek knowledge and during that period because i was around sisters and we talked about salah a lot and i was kind of embarrassed that i was still struggling with my fajr so eventually when you're around good people they rub off on you and then that's how it slowly slowly you know got to me and alhamdulillah i started praying my fajr and when i started praying my fajr waking up became like it was like a, a routine for me you know like it just became easier because i had already established the routine of praying my four salah so fajr was kind of like just easy for me to just get into so take it slowly and gradually and another thing i would advise as well to my revert sisters is that you need to understand the purpose of salah you need to understand it it's not just something that you just have to do because you're muslim we're praying because we want to connect with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want him to forgive our sins most importantly we want the salah to be like a currency to say you know for our akhirah so you need to understand you need to read about salah you need to get books about salah there's one particular book that i really love where is it i'll get it this book i hope you can see it properly the description of the prophet's prayer absolutely amazing everything you need to know um about salah so get a copy and it's by um shekel albani this is my favorite book this is it when it comes to salah and i still read it you know even though i'm like how many years in in praying salah like i'm i still go into this book every so often just to refresh my memory i guess refresh my mind about salah just so that i can get this correct you know exactly the way the prophet muhammad sallallahu did it so i would definitely recommend this book and another advice i would give as well is to set yourself goals you know say to yourself you know what every single day i am going to pray my fajr mm -hmm. this is an example i'm just gonna pray my fajr because i already wake up early anyway and because i'm up early i'm going to make sure i pray my salah and that goes without saying every single day without no excuse unless i have an excuse because i'm on my menses and stuff like that but if i don't have that excuse i will get up and i'll pray because i'm already up or because i'm already getting ready to go to work or i'm getting ready to go to school or college etc make sure you pray that that is something that you set yourself and then you could also set yourself another goal to say okay um at home at isha time anyway and around isha time i'm already winding down to go to bed so let prayer be part of that routine let prayer be part of that goal of let me pray before i head to bed so and another thing i would advise as well is just to connect properly with your salah is to learn the meaning of surah al-fatiha surah al-ikhlas all the short surahs on all the surahs that you're going to be reading so that when you're praying you know exactly what you're saying because obviously most reverts are not arabs you know they're not they're from different parts of the world and they're not arabic speakers you know so learn the meaning of surah al-fatiha surah al-ikhlas and all the other short surahs that you're going to be learning you know learn what it means so that when you're actually praying you know what you're saying and then when you're praying you go when you go in ruku also learn what that means what you're what are you saying you know when you're saying subhana rabbi al ala subhana rabbi al what are you saying Subhanahu rabbi al azim samiyallahu liman hamida what are you saying learn the meanings i think it just makes it so much more that you connect so much more in your salah when you know exactly what you're saying because you have to say these things in arabic and maybe when you first become a revert you don't know exactly what it means but you need to still learn them you know you need to still learn them i think it would definitely help with connecting with your salah a bit more and connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for salah to become part of your normal day-to-day.
and finally my dear sisters i just want to say be kind to yourself don't beat yourself up if you are you know you're struggling or don't beat yourself up if you've missed your salah understand that this has been a journey that you've just embraced so it's going to take a while for you to develop consistency so when you flop when you you know you're not being consistent just be gentle with yourself and ask Allah to forgive you just ask Allah to forgive you. just be like yo Allah please forgive me make this journey easier for me and then just slowly slowly work your way up but one thing I would definitely emphasize on though is just to understand that Salah is important we don't have an excuse we don't have an excuse not to pray it's not a thing where oh Allah knows what's in my heart sis if Allah know, if you know Allah knows what's in your heart what's in your heart will show outwardly what's in your heart you'll be able to do outwardly you understand so if you understand that salah is important and I know that it's important my heart knows it's important then you start putting it into practice you know so it's not something that you delay so that's all I have to say I don't know exactly where sister the sister really wanted me to take this video but this is what i have to say so if anyone has any specific questions let me know and if i can answer it i'll answer it or if i can do a little bit of research just so that i can benefit as well i can learn as well i would love to bring the videos to you inshallah ta'ala but this is all for this video i hope it's been beneficial and just understand that salah is a journey i had my own salah journey even though as a born muslim and alhamdulillah now i just thank allah that i guess it's part of my routine i have to pray if i don't pray my whole life is a Mess. my whole day is a mess and i don't like that we don't like that even when i'm not praying you know like when you're not, when you're excused because of menses i'm not the same i'm literally not the same and during that period of not praying i feel a dip in my iman and i think a lot of sisters can relate to that because for me so a lot it's like yeah i have to pray i have to pray i'm so used to it that even Every time I have a shower, I'm making wudu, even if I don't need to, you know? So it becomes part of you. It becomes part of your routine. So just take it slowly, slowly, and just know that no one, you know, just maybe some, maybe some people have had that steady routine from when they were eight years old and just kept going until adult years, maybe. But a lot of people, it's been a journey. It's been a journey of, okay, I've got my five salah on lock, you know, but I'm struggling with praying on time. Or I'm not really praying my five so long. It's just been a journey for every single one. But ultimately, we want to get to that point where we're praying us a lot on the times that has been, you know, the designated times. And we are praying five times a day. There's no three times. There's no two. There's ultimately our five daily salah inshallah so anyways i hope this was beneficial and um i love being here and i love talking to you guys you guys are my friends you guys are my sisters and if you have any questions let me know and as time goes on inshallah it would be nice for us to like do lives and just chit chat and just benefit and everybody can just benefit from each other you know inshallah ta'ala anywho <laughs> assalamu alaikum and i'll see you guys in my next video